The promise of Jesus reminds us of the truth that he has expressed unto all of us. I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. Thanks be unto God. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I am glad to be here. I'm glad that you're here as we worship together. I welcome you on live stream. You who are watching from a distance, I welcome you. I bless you. And I pray that today is a great day in the Lord for you and for us. By the way, today we are celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. If you would like to participate in that, I would advise you now 
perhaps to go into the kitchen, find some grape juice, find some bread, uh, preferably unleavened bread, and uh, if you don't have that, run down to IGA and get it right now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do I get a cut on that? <laughs> Uh, please, in the, in every pew there is a uh, there is a uh, friendship pad. I got distracted by a couple of grandkids back there who didn't want to go to come to church. I don't think. <laughs> so um, yes, please take that the friendship pad and register your attendance and pass it along. And also, we love to welcome and celebrate. And rejoice in those who are first-time guests at Big Canoe Chapel. Do we have any first-time guests? I'd love to meet you and give you a rose in late March. Any first-time guest this morning? Well, uh, oh, oh, uh, I see the waving of a hand. And uh, I don't know if I can get over there or not. Tell me. I'm Lynn. Good morning. Let me see if I can get over here with you just a bit. All right. I'm Lynn. Hi. Michelle Hoffman. Nice to meet Michelle you. Michelle Hoffman. One. Florinda Sanchez. Flor. Florinda. Florinda Sanchez. Sanchez. Wonderful. Tell me where you're from. Uh, we're both from Washington, D.C. I've moved here, and my friend has helped me move in. So she'll, where are you from? she'll leave. So you've moved to Big Canoe? Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you something. Going from Washington, D.C. to Big Canoe, you made the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> I, think so. I think so, too. Here's a rose for you. Oh, thank you. And God bless you. There's a rose for you. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Florindina. Okay, I got it. Good. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Anyone else? Um, Please take note of the announcements in the bulletin. Everything that's there that is designed for us to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There are opportunities for all of us. That includes me, and I'm thankful for that. I want to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And... Let me tell you what happens to me, how it works with me. When I'm with you, it works. <laughs> it happens. And so uh, I'm glad that you're here today. I'm glad that you are involved in so many areas of the life of the church, and God bless you for that. Let's bow together as we pray. Father, for your goodness and grace and mercy... And love, we give you praise and thanksgiving. Lord, here in this place today, we pray that you would open our hearts. Father, dive deep in our spirits. Lord, we pray that we would be so attentive to your speaking voice that we would respond in the way that you draw us unto and Father, that when we leave here today, we won't be the same people that walked in. There would be something different. And it is nothing other than the presence of your Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. It's in your hymnals, number 139. Let's stand together as we sing.
The Apostles' Creed is found in your hymnal on number 881. We join together in our confession of the Christian faith. I want us to do something just a bit different this morning. When we get to the line, the third day he rose from the dead, the third day he rose from the dead, I want us to say that louder than we have been. I think it's reason to re- it is reason to rejoice. Okay? So you follow me on that. I'm going to be a little louder on that line, okay? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I like that. He rose from the dead. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. It's my privilege to add welcome and greeting to you all. In just a minute, we're going to be praying together. That's a privilege. I'm going to pray for you. You can pray for each other, for family, friends. Those of you on watching us online, uh, we're going to pray for you as well and honored to do that. Uh, I understand we've run out of bulletins, but there are some uh, prayer concerns on there. We typically have those. I don't need to tell you, friends, there are some folks around our country who are in the middle of storms, I mean physical storms. And there's been death. This time of year, it just seems like there's more and more. But there's people in this room who are bringing and who've been going through storms as well. So we, um, we're going to be praying with and for you. I don't need to remind you of the uh, need for us to be praying for people even in Ukraine and the refugees and all the circumstances there. And there are people around the world who are needing our prayers. So as we pray... Let's celebrate the fact that we get to not only talk to the risen Savior, but we get to celebrate that fact. Would you join me in prayer? Father, first of all, I want to thank you for all that you've done for us. You've made promises. You've kept them all except one. You still haven't come back, but we can't wait. You have promised that you'd be with us in all of our life's journeys including the storms, including the times when we kind of wonder if you're even there. But Father, thank you that we can pray with confidence and with joy. So Father, as we pray this morning, would you just put on our heart so many things that we already know. We pray for each other. We pray for ourselves. We pray that for those who are walking through the shadow of the of death. We pray for those who are in the midst of storms. But also, Father, we pray that you're going to give us a great sense of peace and confidence, a great sense of your protection, but also your guidance. Father, would you allow us to experience the very presence of your power? And as we pray, Father, we pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
Father, for your goodness and grace and provision for our lives, we give you thanks and praise. We pray now that the tithe and the offering that you've supplied will all be used for the building of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of John. It's chapter 18, beginning with verse 2 and continuing through verse 11. John 18, verses 2 through 11, and in honor and reverence to the reading and to the hearing of God's Word, let's stand together. Now Judas who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it? You want Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. 
The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You may be seated. By the way, it's not a part of the message today, but one of my favorite passages of Scripture comes out of John 8 when Jesus said, I am he, and those who had come to arrest him fell to the ground. They drew back and fell to the ground. And I've always had the impression that uh, it was Jesus who was walking around helping them up. (laughs) Had he not helped them up, they would have stayed on the ground. It says something about the power and the majesty of the God whom we serve and worship and adore this morning. Well... That's another message in and of itself. Let's let's go on. There's nothing like a burst of spiritual insight. It's been the experience of many people. I've known it myself as a reality in my life. God somehow propels a work of grace perhaps like we've never known before. It's it's a burst of the power in the presence of God. Or maybe it's an insight into His Word, His truth. Maybe the kind of Word that we're familiar with, and we've read it a number of times, but Somehow it comes unto us in a different and more extraordinary way. It comes at a time when we just need it. Maybe you can share that with me. I've known, I've known that reality. God, I need your word. I need your word to speak to me. I need your word to capture my heart afresh and anew. And God is faithful to do such a thing. There's nothing like it. I have a friend, and I haven't seen him in some years, but At one time, we were very close friends, still close friends. We just don't see one another very often. But years ago, he was driving down a two-lane country road between Wilmore, Kentucky and Lexington, Kentucky. It was just before daylight. My friend at the time was battling a terminal disease. The prognosis of that disease was grim. And he was riding along and uh, he topped the crest of this two-lane country road. And he was suddenly overwhelmed by the brilliance of the rising sun. Just turning daylight. And it was one of those clear, crisp spring days And suddenly he was overcome with this profound realization of the love and the presence of Jesus. In fact, it reminded me somewhat of uh, the autobiography of C.S. Lewis entitled, Surprised by Joy. And on that day, Dennis was surprised by joy. It was the breaking through of God's power and presence. He spoke later on to, in fact, it's still his testimony today. He did survive that trauma back uh, probably now 35 years ago. He still practices medicine. He's spoken to numbers of people, large groups. He tells about the tears flowing down his face as he's driving, as the sun is shining, as he experiences somehow the warmth of God's grace. He speaks of the joy of the Lord that is his strength. 
and the spirit of the Holy Spirit that is ministering unto his spirit as he drives, it is the fullness of God's peace that broke in that day to my friend. God broke in on that day. Now, I'm aware today that many of us can share similar testimonies. I know that I can. At the moment that Jesus breathed his last on the cross, the Bible describes what happened on that day. The curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. Suddenly there was this there was this opening of the Holy of Holies that enables people like you and me to approach the throne of grace with, with a sincerity of heart, to approach, to approach it without any hesitancy because God invites us. The, the curtain torn, the Holy of Holies torn, opened up so that we might seek him. The Bible also tells us that on that day, the earth shook and rocks split and tombs were broken open. And there is a centurion who is taking all of this in. And that centurion says, surely he was the son of God. Surely (laughs) this is the one that was promised unto us. And now here we are introduced to this servant of the high priest. The high priest being Caiaphas. The high priest, not a Pharisee in this time, but a Sadducee. A a high priest who has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. He um, He is a scoundrel. This Caiaphas, he is cool and calculated and cunning in the way he, uh, in the way he goes about his job, if you call it that. And it was a job to Caiaphas and only a job. All four Gospels mention the servant of the high priest Caiaphas. There's only one gospel that gives him a name, and that's in the gospel of John that we read. His name is Malchus. And uh, he's, I believe, up front with the captors of Jesus. He wants to make sure he sees it just as it happens. He wants to give a good report to Caiaphas. And so he's in the front, and uh, the arrest turns violent. It's Simon Peter who draws a sword. Probably had it uh, hidden in his cloak or in his garment. Not a long sword, but an a, a, um, intimidating looking dagger at least. And Simon Peter picks out Malchus. Malchus is in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he cuts off the ear of Malchus. He cut it off completely. He swung so hard that it wasn't left hanging by a thread. It was on the ground. And I can see Malchus scurrying around trying to find his ear on the ground. It's dark. Now, they have some torches, and but... Torches don't give off a great deal of life on uh, light on the ground, and so they're looking for his ear. He's bleeding profusely, probably screaming. Peter is immediately rebuked by Jesus. And Malchus, in his excruciating pain, finds that Jesus intervenes immediately. And Jesus reaches down and picks up the ear 
and puts it, it's the right ear, as a matter of fact. John is very clear about it. It's the right ear. And he's holding that ear, and Jesus puts the ear back in place. He touches it, and Malchus is healed. There was no great prayer meeting. There was no prayer vigil on that evening. It was Jesus who saw a need and responded to it in order to protect the will of God being accomplished on that night. I want you for a moment, and by the way, I have a friend in ministry who says it's his, uh, it's his contention that Simon Peter was not aiming toward his ear. He struck at Simon Peter and he missed, but he cut off his ear. His intentions were to kill this one who is coming forth. So here's Malchus, the servant of the high priest. He returns to, to Caiaphas. Now I want you to imagine the conversation for just a moment. He comes into the house of the high priest, Caiaphas, and the, imagine, the uh, uh, conversation might go something like this. Malchus, how did it go? What happened? And uh, Malchus says, well, Master, Jesus was arrested. That has been accomplished. He's on his way to be beaten and to be put on trial. So the arrest went smoothly. Well, Malchus, was there any trouble? And Malchus hesitates for a moment. And he says to Caiaphas, well, master, that, that follower by the name of Cephas, that's what they call him. He had a sword. Nobody noticed, it, noticed the sword. It was wrapped up in his clothing. Oh, well, that's not, that's not good news. <laughs> uh, Malchus, was anyone hurt? Well, yes, master. Someone was hurt. He struck me, and he cut off my right ear. And Caiaphas looks at him. He looks at his right ear. It seems all right to me. And he looks at his left ear, and it's not his left ear. What do you mean he cut off your ear? What do you mean by that? Master, everyone saw it. He cut off my ear, and then... The Nazarene, the one who said, I am he. He reached down on the ground and he took it, maybe even brushed it off a bit, and put it on my head, just touching it. And it was healed immediately. Now, do you think that that was the end of the matter? I believe that the next day when, uh, when Caiaphas receives his breakfast that is served by Malchus, his plate is put before him and he looks to Malchus and all he can see is that ear, that right ear. And then later on in the day when Malchus is doing some cleaning just walking around the house, there's Caiaphas. And what does he see? He once again sees that ear. He gets ready to go to bed. And uh, Malchus is preparing his bed and everything. And, uh, and he sees that ear. That's the only thing he can see is that ear. What about Caiaphas? Let me ask you this. Was Caiaphas able to forget that ear? 
I have another friend in ministry who said uh, he thought that Caiaphas just dismissed Malchus. Get out of here. I don't want to see that ear any longer. I don't disagree with that. That's possible. Was Caiaphas able to forget that ear? Was Caiaphas able to push all of that aside and say to himself and try to uh, rationalize what happened? Surely Malchus was just imagining these things, which was not the case. Malchus was a loyal servant. And Caiaphas trusted him with all of his life. Malchus would never lie. But what about this Caiaphas? Was he able to live after this? One writer said, no enemy. This is in relation to Caiaphas. No enemy is so deeply entrenched from the heights of God as the one who has a counterfeit religion. And that was Caiaphas. The one who follows the customs, he did that, knows the jargon, Caiaphas, he was there, engages in the practices of religion, that was Caiaphas, but who knows no living source of power within the will whose life has never been transformed, whose ears are no longer sensitive to the voice of Christ. Caiaphas. As dead as a hammer with no sense of the presence and the power of God. And Malchus, touched by the living God, restored. Malchus, touched by the living God, brought into a kingdom, the kingdom of God. Here is the touch of Christ today for us. This sacrament, this invitation for us to draw near by faith and to have the Holy Spirit right here, right now, touch us in that place where we need restoration and grace and deliverance. It's his invitation to us. All that do truly and earnestly repent of their sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, walking from this place, in his holy way. The invitation is to draw near by faith. To take this holy sacrament to your comfort. As we all confess before almighty God. The prayer of confession is in the bold print in your bulletin. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way of peace. Come into the brokenness of our lives and our land with your healing love. Help us to be willing to bow before you in true repentance and to bow before one another in real forgiveness. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, melt our hard hearts and consume the pride and prejudice which separate us. Fill us, O oh Lord, with your perfect love which cast out our fear and binds us together in that unity which you share with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And here is the good news of the gospel of Jesus. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice, not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. The great thanksgiving is in your hymnal on page 13, if you would turn there. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as the children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In just a moment, the servers are going to come and we're going to receive the sacrament. The ushers will guide you to the table. To the ones that are on the left, if you'd come by way of center aisle, receive the sacrament, return to your seat by the way of the side aisles. Same over here to my right. There are receptacles in the pew. As you leave, you can place your cup, the empty cup, in that receptacle. So if our servers would come.
our closing hymn is number 424. In your hymnal, we stand and sing the first verse, number 424. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and in every day to come. Amen. I'm so glad that you could be a part of this live stream worship at Big Canoe Chapel today. I am blessed by your presence. And remember that at Big Canoe Chapel, we tell the greatest story that's ever been told concerning the greatest offer that's ever been made by the greatest person who's ever lived, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, on the bottom of the screen, you'll see some numbers. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any comments about the message today or anything about Big Canoe Chapel, uh, if you would like to request prayer for someone that is on your heart today, or if you'd like to make a faith decision for Jesus, I'd love to hear from you. Please call. Let's stay connected. And today... May God bless you in every way.